this video, we're going to be using InfoBurst to take data from a database. It can be SQL Server, Oracle, any ODBC compliant database. In this workflow, we will be using SQL Server. We're going to take data from the database and using InfoBurst, we're going to be creating a hyperfile, which can be used by Tableau. Once we've got the hyperfile created, we're going to set a schedule in InfoBurst and have the schedule dependent on a file being present in a certain location. So this can be when your ETL process finishes, for example. And with that schedule, we'll be publishing a Tableau data extract in hyper format up to Tableau server. We'll also be publishing a hyper file to a network share. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture we have for this solution. We have our databases, so we can be using SQL Server, Oracle, any ODBC compliant database will be input for this workflow. InfoBurst is going to process the results of the queries from these database platforms. Um, InfoBurst has its own repository, which can be a SQL Server or an Oracle database. The output is going to be a TDE or hyperfile or a burst or split TWBX file. And the destinations that InfoBurst can publish to are email, FTP, network share, Tableau online, Tableau server, a lot of different a lot of different publishing options. So that's the infrastructure we have in place for this workflow. So this is the data we have to work with here. This is a SQL Server database and it's the AdventureWorks DW database um, from Microsoft. And what we have here is a query that's returning us a bunch of information from the reseller sales fact table. And we have a number of columns, number of dimensions and a few measures um, and what we want to do is use this as the basis for our Tableau data extract. So what I've done is I've created a stored procedure just called SP underscore get sales. We're going to have InfoBurst call this stored procedure. I could also cut and paste the SQL into InfoBurst, but we'll, we will be using the stored procedure in InfoBurst to get the data that we want to use for our Tableau workbooks. So now we're back in InfoBurst. The thing we want to do next is to get the data from our database. Um, if you haven't already created a um, DB connection in InfoBurst, it's just as simple as going on New DB Connection, and this you give it a name and the login credentials, the server catalog, etc. You, you'd also select the platform, whether it's SQL Server or Oracle, or an ODBC connection that you set up on the InfoBurst server. <clears throat> I've already got that set up. So what I need to do now is define a query that I want to run with this database connection. And in this case, I'm, I'm giving this query a name, stored proc sales. Um, the SQL statement I'm executing is I'm executing the store procedure that we looked at a little bit earlier. I could also have a SQL statement in this section. The important thing to note is that the user credentials that you've assigned to this database connection have to have the rights on your database platform to either run the SQL or run the store procedure, whatever you're going to be running in order to ret retrieve the data from the database. So I'm going to click on add. The next thing I need to do is test this query. So I'm going to click on the, the green test button here. I'll pause the video while this finishes. So what InfoBurst will do is return the first 500 rows of data for the query and um, <clears throat> once the test has been successful it's automatically added to this database connection. So I can go ahead and close this window now. The next step is to go and create a burst. So I'm just going to call this SQL query to type Tableau Hyper. I'm not going to give a description. You can go ahead and do that if you want to. For this workflow I'm just going to give it a name. Click on add. The next step is to add the document um, in InfoBurst. In this case, the document is going to be <clears throat> the database connection that we've defined and that store procedure that we want to run. So I select those two and click OK. Now I've got the document that InfoBurst will use. Now I want to go to Deliveries. I'm going to go New Delivery from Blank. InfoBurst does allow you to create delivery templates that you can reuse within the application. 
So in this case, I want to select Tableau Server. Next, you select uh, the Tableau platform you've defined in InfoBurst. In, in my case, I've, I have two Tableau platforms defined. I'm going to select the first one. I have to select the project I want to post this to or publish this to. So I'll go ahead and click on this icon. So this is going to bring me up all of the projects that I my ID has access to in on Tableau servers. I'm going to select IB tab workflow examples. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this AdventureWorks SQL Query. The next step is to go to format. In this case I want it to be a Tableau data source. I want it to be in hyper format. And that's what I'm going to do for this. I'm going to click on add. So at this point I've created a SQL statement or or sorry, a store procedure that executes a SQL statement. I've added that to InfoBurst. I've added a delivery to Tableau Server. At this point I can go ahead and test this burst. Um, one of the things that you can do is click on simulate delivery. So it's going to run through all the steps without actually publishing um, the file. In this case, actually, I want to publish the, the hyper file up to Tableau server. So I'm going to go ahead and click burst now. I'm going to click on timeline. <clears throat> this is going to show me step by step um, everything that InfoBurst is doing, connecting to the database and then publishing to the Tableau server. I'm going to pause while this workflow finishes. So we can see here that the, the burst did complete successfully. I close this out in InfoBurst and I go to my Tableau server instance. This is the project on Tableau server that I published the data source to. And here we have the hyperfile that's been created. If I have web authoring permissions on this project within Tableau server, I can go ahead and click on Actions New Workbook. This will bring me up the web authoring interface of Tableau server. So now on Tableau Server, I can go ahead and I can start building out a, a dashboard with the data that we exported to a hyperfile from Tableau Server. And of course, from Tableau Desktop, we can connect to Tableau Server. I'm just going to find the this is the hyperfile that we created just earlier. I'm connected to Tableau Server. Click on this data source and update now. It's going to retrieve the data from the server to my desktop. I can now at this point go ahead and start working on a worksheet with this data. If you don't have Tableau Server in your organization, you may want to create a hyperfile that you can push out to a network share. So what I'm going to go ahead here and do is I'm going to copy the burst that we just made, paste it into the same folder so it's created it here. I'm just going to open it and I'm going to make a few changes to it. So I'm going to rename this SQL Query to Network Share. I've already got the, the query defined here. I'm going to go to Deliveries going to remove the delivery we created a few minutes ago. I'm going to create a new one. And in this delivery, instead of Tableau Server, we'll be pushing it to a network share. So I'm going to click Network Share as my destination. For the path, it'll be one of the network shares that has been set up by your Tableau administrator. So I'm going to select InfoBurst Output. Uh, I'll leave the file name blank. InfoBurst will automatically give it a file name if I leave that blank. Uh, for the format, it's going to be Tableau Data Source and Hyper. I click on Add. I save this burst. And now I can burst this instance of the burst, which is going to create that Hyper file to a network share. Click on Timeline. And I'll pause while this finishes. OK, we can see that the burst did end and it, it was successful. If I go and have a look at the network share that I specified, I can see it's created this AdventureWorks sales underscore stored proc sales hyper. This is what InfoBurst named the file 
automatically since I didn't provide a name, but it has created the hyper file. Now with Tableau Desktop, I can access this file. So I'll just show you how to do that. So from Tableau Desktop, I'll just click on Connect to Data. And I'm going to select More. And it's going to allow me to browse to that folder. So in this case, it was D, InfoBurst Output. And this was the hyper file created. Click on Open. And I can go ahead and start building out a dashboard in Tableau Desktop using the file hyperfile created by InfoBurst. So now that we've used InfoBurst to create a Tableau hyperfile that can be published to Tableau Server or to Network Share, at this point now we want to have this be a regularly occurring event. So we want to have this happen on a schedule. Um, but we don't want it to run unless our ETL load is finished. For example, let's say that we want to run this schedule 5 o'clock Monday to Friday, which we're going to do in a few minutes here. However, the ETL load, which usually finishes at 4, once in a while it doesn't finish until after 5. There could be processing problems or maybe higher than expected data volumes and the ETL load is not finished by 5 in the morning. So we're going to want to have it wait until the ETL load is finished until the schedule runs and the hyperfile is updated. So in order to do that in InfoBurst we're going to use an event. So I'm going to go click on new event. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it ETL load complete. I'm going to have it check every five minutes. So when we add this to a schedule it will be checking initially when the schedule is supposed to run and then every five minutes thereafter. And we're going to have a file presence type. So what this means is it's going to be looking for a file in a specified location. And in our workflow, what would be happening is the ETL process will be creating an empty text file once it's finished. And we we're saying that we want to have InfoBurst look for this file <coughs> on a network share we've created and the file is going to be an empty text file called etl underscore complete and this is what um, the schedule will be dependent on so i've added the event next step is to create the schedule i'm going to click on new schedule and in the schedule we're going to be specifying when we want it to run and also not to run unless that file is present that we just created that event for. So I've given the schedule a name, AdventureWorks Sales SQL Hyper Extract. So the frequency I want is what I want to set next. So I want this to run daily. I want it to run Monday to Friday. So I'm going to uncheck check Saturday and Sunday. I want to start at 5 a.m. I want it to start tomorrow. Well, let's make it um, the next Monday. And we'll have it end on a couple of years down the road. <clears throat> so this schedule will run every day, Monday to Friday, for the next couple of years at 5 in the morning. Now, I don't want to run unless my ETL load is complete. So we're going to add this event that we created just a few minutes ago, this ETL load complete. So we've got the frequency, we have the event added. Now the next thing is to select the items. So in this case, we're going to select that burst that we just worked with, which was SQL query to Tableau Hyper. So this is the one that publishes to Tableau Server. And click on Add. So now we have a schedule created that's going to refresh the data from our SQL query. Uh, Monday to Friday, every day, except on those days when the ETL load hasn't finished. The schedule will not run until the ETL load is finished and created that empty text file so that the event, file presence event, kicks in. So this workflow that we just showed has more than one purpose. So in addition to everything that I've shown here, the next video in this series is going to show how to leverage this workflow for a secondary workflow that will do the following. It will allow you to create one dashboard, so one TWBX file. 
that has data for all of your um, all of your dimensions. There's no filters built into this um, TWBX file. But what you want to do in this example is split that TWBX file based on a dimension. And what we're going to be using is product category. We're going to want to have to take that one TWBX file and split it into individual files containing just the data for each one of the product categories and then publish it back up to Tableau Server. So that will be the next video in this series. That concludes this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. To learn more about Infosol and the products and services they offer, please visit Infosol.com. If you'd like more information on the Infoburst product itself, please visit help.infosol.com. There's a number of very useful articles on that site. Once again, thanks for watching.